Hello YouTube, Chris Chapman, Rusty Nuts Model Shop, coming at you from somewhere. We're going to go ahead and get started on a new tutorial on how I wire my motors. I've had some requests on this, so I'm to the point on this motor for my Firebird to go ahead and uh, get started on it. There's what I'm going to do. I have planned on using this um, parts by part distributor pre-wire distributor kit and so this will actually be going on to the motor but is what I'd like to do is show you how I use a kit distributor kit to make them on my own without having to use the pre-wired stuff. This one here was given to me and I felt it would go really good in this kit. So one thing to remember when you're doing your distributors and your wiring and stuff, if you're building a stock vehicle, it's going to be black wires every vehicle that comes off the factory assembly line to the showroom factory to be sold to you directly is always done with black wire if you ever see a vehicle that has red blue green yellow orange wires then them are aftermarket wiring that has been added to the uh, car to help enhance the performance and so when you're doing your builds look at it and if it's going to be a custom build go with some custom colored wires if it's going to be a stock and you're going to recreate the uh, floor showroom floor vehicle you would end up going with black wiring on it so <coughs> oh, excuse me just want to throw that out real quick now like I said this is the motor I have in my uh, Pontiac that's a uh, junker and you guys have seen some of it this is where I'm at with the motor I've still got to do some weathering and stuff on it but it's working out really good to get and looking nice and junky and as you can see I have already cut out, or drilled out I should say, two holes there and two holes here. Also on the other side you can see two holes there and two holes there. That is where the spark plugs will be going, or the wires. And so, again, there's a hole up here of which I've already pre-drilled. So we'll get back to this here momentarily. But first, this is the distributor that came in the kit. Nice little tiny one. Which, the smaller they are, the funner they are because they're such a pain in the butt. But, what I'm going to do... Clip this off. Where did I put my clamp? I just had it. Hello, clamp. Clampy. Clampy. Well, I just had it sitting here. There it is. Little buggers teasing me. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put inside my little clamp. You can see the end of it there. I am going to use a pin vise. With a very small bit. And right down in the center of this, 
Oh, I just noticed that it's got the uh, tabs on it. And on the tabs, I don't know if you can see that or not. But you can see how it has a little tab sticking up that represent the boots. We don't want those on there. So with the sanding stick, we will go ahead and lightly sand them off. And there we go. Nice and flat. Now you got to get this centered and take your time. It's going to be kind of hard to see me do this. But you don't have to put a lot of pressure and just let the drill bit do its job. Let's see if that's up there. You can see the plastic starting to come up. I'm not putting any pressure at all on the drill bit. I just sit it on there and drill it down and again let the weight of the vise and let the drill bit do its thing. And this is going to get gradually thinner and thinner and thinner as we go so it's gonna require some care you gauge how deep it is by how far down the drill bit goes You want to try to run this down fairly deep. I have this drill bit set to where I can take it down to the halfway point of the bit. And in doing that, you can see how far out the drill bit sits. And you can see how far I've got it down in there right now. Still require a little bit more. Okay, now you can see I'm halfway down the side there. So that should ought to give me plenty of room or depth to do it. So I put that away. Now you can just change out uh, different bits and stuff. But I got these little drill bits here. So I go to the next size here. Again, drill this down to the same depth. And it's imperative that you keep this thing centered. Now I'm going to jump up to my next size, which I'm actually jumping up one other size because I, uh, somewhere here, my drill bits fell on the floor and my chair rolled over it and broke it. somewhere but oh there it is so that one's not gonna do us any good 
And it sucks because I really like these. I'm not even re sure where I got these. But they work great. But you just progressively get it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I go with the biggest one that I have. And there we go. Now you'll see that with the bigger drill bits, I drilled all the way through. This is the top of it. This is the bottom. I left a little bit of a sleeve on there. I don't know if you're gonna see that or not. But that'll kind of help be a guide to get it. That'd be a guide to get it locked in there. By having it drilled out like I do, it's going to make it very easy. Okay, now I got the wire here. I need to cut off nine. One. Two, three, from the director of that album. What exactly do you call your style of music? I call it James Brown music. Okay, I've got my nine wires. These wires are kind of small, so I want to grab onto my tweezers here. Oh, that one wanted to run away, but I didn't let it. I like to take my pliers here, just kind of hold on to them and twist them a little bit, just to get a get them started. That's pretty thick. I don't know if that's going to fit through the uh, distributor. I guess I should have put it back in here. Put these all in separate. Let's see. I'm gonna actually switch this around because that is a pretty small distributor. Go down 
one in there. Okay, the way it looks, I am going to go ahead and open this up just a little bit wider. And I got it to where. drill bits got it. Now I'm just going to kind of clean it out just a smidge in here with my file. Okay, that hopefully widened it up enough and now we will retry this. That one's kind of got buggered up. to uh, cut one more. Still pretty tight, but I don't really dare go much wider. Okay, so what we're going to do, we'll have our eight. So, like I said, this is a lot smaller than usual. So, what we'll do is after we get all of these in, we'll just take this wire here and tuck it down inside there. Little dab of super glue will hold it in there. Now you can see how far out that is. This is where I actually do. my gluing on it. I need to make sure I get that as tight as I can. Just a dab of glue at the very end. Where am I? Right on the very tips of it. Then I'll put a little bit of glue on my little pad here. Grab my toothpick. And then I will 
put a little bit of glue right around the base of the distributor here. Now that that's done, let it dry and then you can paint it. Typically the top part here, whoops, the upper part would be a tan color and the bottom would be a silver. This stuff here isn't going to be seen so you don't have to worry about painting it. So what we're going to do is let this here dry for a minute and then I'll be back and we will go ahead and start off with the other one. But this here, we'll, I'll just use this in a different kit, but there I go. So I'm going to take, stick these wires in here and put that off to the side for it to dry. Now, the actual application of getting this installed with this is going to be done with a pair of tweezers, a little bit of glue, I just dropped my there it is thought it went on the floor Whew. Now, we'll pretend that this is what I just made here. We would take this and use it the same way I'm going to use this. And this one... Got a short one right there. That's the one that you want to add to your distributor or your uh, singing with Bob. <laughs> now this one here, you can see it's already stripped. There's no wire inside of it, which is really cool. That's one thing I do like about these distributors. parts by parts in them you get already stripped. Some of them you get has a wire in there. You have to cut off a little bit of the end, grab the wire and pull it out. There's my exacto. I like to use my little mat here for doing my plug wires and I go with two millimeters. Two. 
Okay. I've got all eight of them. And that's what I'm going to do is with my toothpick that I put down right there. I'm going to go ahead fill in my pre-drilled hole. Make sure I get a good amount in there. And we will go ahead and tuck that down inside there. And I like to leave it where it sticks up just a smidgen. Wow, this um, interweb music thing is um, like all the kids are doing it. I don't know much about it. I spend like all my time driving my friend to work and stuff, so I know it because she's li she listens and creates stations. You now, know once I, I get it inside like, there, not top 40, but top I do like Chevron to come and put a dab right around there just to make sure that it's got a good solid bond all the way around. All the hips, all the time. Okay, and that just needs a second, a couple minutes. So I will go ahead and let that dry and be right back. All right, now that that's all dried up in there, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the wires apart. Let's see. Got the tweezers here. Oh, I'm sorry, this stuff got in your way, huh? Go ahead, hop on up there. Sorry, dog decides to come in and wants her spot on the bed. Now I'm going to pull these apart. That is the middle one. As you do this, you can see how they all have their own little line. You want to separate them in the order that they go to, so that one would go around. There we go. This one goes here. Okay, now you can see I've got a spider effect. It goes one, two, three, four, all the way around. So it's a circle. Now, a lot of people I've seen turn around and take four of them, put them down this way, and run them over one, two, three, four. Same with this to where it looks like a part in somebody's hair and they've combed half of it off to one side half off to the other that is actually incorrect and I'm not going to be to the point to where I'm going to be exactly accurate but you can get accurate you can look up online and find the actual firing order and you would take that wire and put it in the uh, piston slot here for each firing order but is what I do want to point out is that one will go from this side over, then one over here will come back over this way. And so, I'll kind of show you. And to try to keep this video short, I'm going to go ahead and kind of clip these down just a little bit. And we'll go ahead and get in a couple of them on this side, then I'll go ahead and finish it, then come back. So, now well, you don't have to get bored watching me do the same thing eight different times so I need my cutters up here we're gonna take the very first one and run it down so I can kinda of get an idea
I cut it right there, that will give me enough length. Now, the weight of spark plug wires is actually pretty, pretty heavy. And so you want to kind of have it sagging down, but you don't want it touching a whole lot of stuff. So I kind of form it. And I will take my tweezers here, pick up one of these black boots that I did. That one just took off. This is going to be a bugger on me just for the fact that I'm recording. Come on, buddy. Okay, it appears that these are a little bit tight. So what I'll do is I'll take a needle, a push pin needle, You got to be careful as you're doing this so that you don't poke yourself. I'm just trying to twist it down on there. That helps to open them up a little bit. So, let's try this again. Come on. There we go. And I push it up just a little bit. Now you can see how it moves freely on there. And we'll go ahead and just see it down over here, right there. I'm going to put a little dab. Put super glue in there and then using my tweezers I will kind of roll it stick the wire right there oh, and there it goes Boy, this is just wanting to be a little bit of a pain, which typically it's not. Now I'll just grab that black boot, roll it down there. Position it nice and tight. Now you can see how it's in there. That just needs a little bit of time to dry. Now you can see how the loom or the wire is up kind of arced. That's the way I like to have it so that I can uh, adjust it a little bit here in a minute. Now is what I do is I will go to the very next wire and I am going to carry that one and pull it down 
so that you can see how it's coming across. It's this wire right here. And it comes across, wraps around to come up here again. Snip that short. We will grab ourselves a boot. That's where the problem is, no music. So now I got my boot on there. Again, toothpick. Just a small dab of glue, don't need much. And I'll grab on to the pliers or tweezers. Again. Side. And I'll go ahead and put it down inside there. And you want to try to get it to where it looks like your plugs are all sticking straight out of the block, not laying up against it. Now you can see that side now has a plug in it. And I kind of like to keep mine floppy and out of place on those weathered ones. Now on my cleaner ones I do use wire looms. But I don't want to put wire looms and waste them on a rusty old motor like this. So I will go to the very next wire in line to the one that I just did again. Of which is this one right here. Pull these wires back. It's this one. I'm going to push it down and then pull it around. Now I don't know if you can see that. But it's twisted right up inside there. You'll see what I mean by how it looks shortly. I'll bring this back. Go ahead and cut this down right there. Now you want to keep your wires long enough to where you can actually slide them down in there because you're not going to see it. So if it slides down in there a quarter of an inch, cool. That's where it needs to be. get this to go in quick. Okay, so I got that one on there. You can see it there. Put the glue in the next hole. And same process. And this is what you're going to do with all of them. See that spark plug boot down there. I want to go ahead and kind of push this one over just a smidgen. 
and there you go now we have two on this side so I'm gonna go ahead get the rest of these ones in here and from that point I'll come back and show you where my progress is but keep in mind now we'll be taking this one here and pulling it across and so that's where we'll leave off right now and I'll be back now okay I'm back here I got the rest of it wired up and as you can see got all four wires that or now yeah, four wires there all four wires over here you can see how I've kind of grouped it down inside there and same with over here on this side just so that I can make sure that everything looks right the weight of them and everything looks realistic now what I like to do is use where did I put it? Right here. I picked this up at the uh, dollar store. It cost me a dollar. There's three, six, nine, twelve different shades of browns and tans and stuff. The thing that I like about this, what side does it open on? I believe it's right here. These are your basic powders. This is just the eyeshadow that you get at the dollar store. You get at Walmart and everything, but a pack like this at Walmart's like $4.99. Has a whole bunch of different colors. That's what I like to do is take my little brushes. And we want to go with a little bit We'll go with this color right here Load up the brush You can see how I've got it Then I come in here And with this one being rusty You could do this on new ones too Let's add a little bit of powder down along here. Takes that sheen off the wires. And I don't know if you can see this real well. I will be getting some pictures and I'll add them here at the end of the slideshow. And that right there is how I do my weathering on them and my installation of the wires. Now I've got this one here that I will add this boot that I have left over here. I'll take this boot, put it on there, and put it on the a little cap after I get the motor and everything placed because that'll be sitting over on a firewall and so there's my tutorial on how I do my wiring and stuff I'll go ahead and sit that there I'll get the rest of this motor together and then I'll get some uh, pictures like I said to do a slideshow of it I'll complete it at the end so thanks for watching I hope it was helpful to you Chris Chapman here and Rusty Nuts Model Shop. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Bye.